Californians call it the big one. An earthquake so powerful it could destroy Los Angeles. But where will it come from? And what will it do? Now, scientists and supercomputers apply hard data to create a virtual big one. Riding waves of disaster and testing the quake's power on highways, houses, even skyscrapers. Science can now estimate the true force, revealing the scale of devastation, engineering secrets to survival, and some unexpected surprises. The big one may not be the one you think. Climb aboard a 7,000 mile per hour force of nature and find out what's in store for the City of Angels when a super quake strikes. Northridge, California, 20 miles from downtown Los Angeles, January 17, 1994. The most powerful earthquake in over 50 years hits greater LA. The quake reaches 6.7 on the Richter scale. In 15 seconds, it devastated 25,000 structures killed 60 people and left 25,000 homeless. The repair bill, over $20 billion. The costliest earthquake in U.S. history. But an even bigger quake is coming. And L.A. isn't alone. 50% of the world's megacities lie on or near major fault lines. Experts believe that sometime in the next century, an earthquake could kill one million people. Since 1995, earthquakes from Turkey to Japan to Indonesia caused over $250 billion in damage and killed over 450,000 people. No one knows where it will strike. But scientists in Southern California say the next quake could be over 30 times more powerful than Northridge. An earthquake so catastrophic, we've only imagined its destructive power. Earthquake in Sensoron, your most startling motion picture experience. A city crumbles. You feel it as well as see it in Sensoron. Now, science can improve on fiction. At the Southern California Earthquake Center, over 30 scientists have created a model showing exactly what a big one will do. They've put in over 30,000 hours combining Earth science data and high-performance computers. They can reveal the deadly forces lurking beneath Los Angeles. Their computer simulation, called TerraShake, is more terrifying than any Hollywood disaster film. Seismic waves hundreds of miles wide, racing thousands of miles per hour, releasing more energy than dozens of Northridge quakes. TerraShake is giving us our first real look at the big one and the disaster that could strike Los Angeles. The LA region is home to almost 18 million people, making it one of the largest urban centers on Earth. But how many of them realize Southern California is shaken by 10 to 20 earthquakes every day? If you stood here all day, well, another event just came in as we were standing here. The fact is, thousands of earthquakes rattle our planet every day. We just don't feel most of them beneath the insulating layer of ocean and land. But in California, 
one hot spot is a prime candidate for the big one. We've all heard of it, the San Andreas Fault. More than 800 miles long and 10 miles deep. The San Andreas runs almost the entire length of California. It is America's most famous and feared crack in the earth. The San Andreas has already proved it can wipe out an American city. April 18, 1906, San Francisco. The San Andreas Fault rips apart in a massive quake, 45 times more powerful than Northridge. The shaking and fires kill over 3,000 people, annihilating the city by the bay. Basically, the largest city in the western United States was gone after the earthquake was over. Will the San Andreas unleash the next big one? San Andreas, we have extremely good data on its frequency of occurrence and pretty good data on the size and timing of those. Therefore, we know that one is really ready to go. Geologists are convinced the southern section of the San Andreas, just outside Los Angeles, unleashes a major quake about every 150 years. The last time it happened was in 1857. Greater LA's 18 million residents may be living on borrowed time. If the San Andreas is the big one, it could start here, 150 miles outside Los Angeles, along the eastern edge of the Salton Sea. Terra Shake can show exactly what happens. It begins with a crack. Deep in the earth, the fault line unzips along a seam 120 miles long and 10 miles deep. Seismic waves race along at 7,000 miles per hour, releasing five megatons of energy, as powerful as 333 Hiroshima atomic bombs. The computered multicolored bands reveal just how much the Earth moves during this San Andreas quake. The green leading edge of the wave picks up and moves the Earth over three feet. The yellow band over six and a half feet. Along the fault line, where the shaking is most intense, the red area shoves the ground over 13 feet. And the purple wave pushes the Earth an unbelievable 26 feet. It takes less than 30 seconds for the earthquake to overwhelm Palm Springs and flatten the world-famous resort. Sheer pressure along the fault reaches 5 to 15 tons per square inch. At the one-minute mark, the giant quake bears down on San Bernardino and takes out its first major casualty, one of LA's lifelines, the I-15 freeway, a main artery in and out of the city. 126,000 cars travel it every day, but it's built directly on top of the San Andreas. The quake tears a 15 to 20 foot chasm across the highway, severing a critical escape route from LA. At one minute, the earthquake slices through the heart of San Bernardino, a county of two million people. Terra-shaped colors reveal the ground will be picked up and moved up to 20 feet in a fraction of a second. Powerful vibrations will shake the area for over a minute at a magnitude of 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale. The scientist in charge for Southern California of the U.S. Geological Survey told me that in the event of a major earthquake on the San Andreas Fault, San Bernardino would be, and this is a direct quote, toast. There are two things that scare experts the most about San Bernardino. Lots of people 
and lots of bricks. Sturdy as brick buildings might look, they're no match for the big one. Nineteen ninety nine, northern Turkey. An earthquake has reduced the city of Izmit to rubble. Rubble composed mostly of bricks and concrete. Over twenty thousand buildings collapse. Over seventeen thousand people die. Over forty thousand are injured. Those poorly reinforced concrete buildings that were in Turkey are of an architectural style that they actually learned from Southern Californians. Poorly reinforced brick is a recipe for disaster in an earthquake zone. Why? Because unreinforced brick walls are only strong up and down. A brick wall, eight feet tall and five feet wide, can support the weight of 756 people. But on its side, the weight of just one person can collapse it. Unreinforced brick lacks the internal strength to overcome this weakness. Wood frame structures are nailed together for strength and flexibility. The same goes for welded steel. But unreinforced brick walls are more like a house of cards, a set of rigid units that can't flex. When an earthquake strikes, the structure shakes violently, triggering a death trap. In San Bernardino, structures built before 1950 are rarely quake-proofed. Many buildings could collapse when the earthquake rumbles through. We're just one minute into the San Andreas quake, and TerraShake has revealed a wide swath of destruction. Over three million people, one million buildings, and at least one major interstate are swept up in the catastrophe. Now, TerraShake delivers a new surprise, something the scientists did not expect. A rogue seismic wave is hurtling through the mountains, heading directly for Los Angeles. TerraShake data reveals underground channels called waveguides pick up the quake's energy and redirect the seismic waves in a new direction toward downtown Los Angeles. The waves will be channeled along the mountains in Los Angeles and this is one of the main findings of this study. This waveguide effect is generating very localized, strong shaking in Los Angeles that we hadn't noticed before. The waveguide effect intensifies the earthquake as it funnels between two mountain ranges, emerging directly beneath Los Angeles and seven million people. One minute, 15 seconds after the quake begins, downtown LA starts to shake violently. People on the street and in the skyscrapers have no time to prepare. Casualties begin to mount. The quake has already knocked out a vital escape route, Interstate 15. Now it threatens another critical feature of LA its hospitals. We're gonna have tens of thousands of injured people, maybe hundreds of thousands of injured people. We need the hospitals. When this earthquake strikes, LA's hospitals may be overwhelmed. One study says hundreds of Southern California hospital buildings aren't adequately quake-proofed. Dozens lie in the danger zone according to the TerraShake simulation. The much smaller Northridge earthquake shut down nine hospitals. And the terror of that disaster offers a glimpse of what could happen in the big one. Something went pitch black. 
Then it started to shake. I was pinned to my desk by a huge filing cabinet behind me, and I couldn't get out. I kept thinking of the six stories above me. I kept thinking of the pancake effect. If it collapses, or am I going to die? Experts fear many hospitals aren't prepared to function after a catastrophic earthquake. If the roads are destroyed, these hospitals may shut down in a matter of days, if not hours. Broken water mains and blackouts mean no fresh water. Ruptured gas lines create huge fire hazards. And if the sprinklers go off, that section of hospital must be evacuated. Nothing worked. We had to evacuate via the stairwells. Patients had to be moved in the priority that those who could walk out walked first. The others had to be hand carried by multiple people. Some experts believe the total number of people seeking medical attention could top one million. Thinking about treating that many people, and we don't have the hospital capacity for that. After the wave strikes downtown, the earthquake continues for three more minutes. The Northridge quake lasted just 15 seconds and devastated thousands of buildings. This virtual San Andreas quake has lasted 16 times longer. So is this the legendary big one? Before we'll know, scientists must apply the same data, 43 million megabytes, to show how the San Andreas tremors would affect actual building designs. Homes, offices, even skyscrapers. It does give us some concern that uh, the ground motions uh, may be larger than was planned for when these buildings were designed. Take an office building downtown. This design is identical to hundreds of offices in Los Angeles. 20 stories tall, steel frame construction. Designs like this survive the Northridge quake. But can it survive an assault from the San Andreas? If this building collapses, it may signal the fate of numerous LA buildings. No one has ever applied such precise earthquake data to a real design like this until now. The earthquake begins in LA and our office building begins to tremble. Imagine yourself standing in a bus which is at rest and you're, you're hanging on to it and the bus starts off suddenly. You get pushed back. The bus stops, you get pushed forward. Now imagine this happening real fast. That's what the building is going to do in an earthquake. The shaking increases and our building begins to sway. The upper floors swinging most of all. The building leans precariously to the side and then returns to center. The cycle repeats every three and a half seconds. The tremors last almost two minutes. The steel frame twists and turns, but remains standing. Structural engineers analyze the data. The building's extreme motion is terrifying, but it's actually just what the experts are looking for. Modern office towers are supposed to sway just like this. It's a kind of earthquake survival plan. In fact, there's a general rule that steel frame buildings like this are designed to sway up to two and a half percent of their height. This means our 300 foot tall building can sway over six feet off center without collapsing. According to this 2.5% sway rule, LA's tallest skyscrapers can swing over 18 feet before catastrophe strikes. 
Each swing absorbs the earthquake's energy, saving the building from collapse. Despite the intense power of the San Andreas quake, Terra Shake suggests this is not the big one. It's a massively powerful quake, 30 times stronger and 16 times longer than Northridge. It shifts the earth as much as 26 feet, crippling hospitals and destroying highways. Los Angeles and the cities of Palm Springs and San Bernardino are hit hard. But the San Andreas quake does not destroy LA. Because it begins over 150 miles outside the city, it releases a tremendous amount of energy before reaching downtown. But this doesn't mean Southern California can rest easy. Scientists have uncovered a far more terrifying problem. A fault line two miles underground. While far less famous than the San Andreas, this fault is far more dangerous. It lies in the worst possible location, directly beneath downtown LA. And now, the same number crunching that reveals the true power of a San Andreas quake can show what the real big one can do. The Northridge quake caused more than $20 billion worth of damage. And perhaps most disturbing, the quake was a complete surprise. The fault that caused Northridge had gone undetected. The reality is Los Angeles sits atop countless fault lines. This computer image reveals 150 or so major fault lines in Southern California that scientists know about. And there's one recently discovered fault that worries them. The Puente Hills Fault. Located directly below downtown Los Angeles. Beneath the city, two giant slabs are pushing against each other. Tons of sheer pressure slowly reaching the breaking point. And if there is a looming big one that could destroy LA, scientists agree Puente Hills is the most likely culprit. That a Puente Hills earthquake would rank up as being not only one of the worst earthquakes the US could experience, but also one of the costliest disasters. A large earthquake on uh, Puente Hills uh, fault uh, would be far worse uh, for the nation than, uh, than a Katrina disaster. Researchers for the Southern California Earthquake Center want to calculate the true power of this future disaster. Using the same technology built for the virtual San Andreas earthquake, scientists now turn their attention to Puente Hills. Once again, they feed geological data into supercomputers. But this time, the simulated earthquake begins directly beneath downtown Los Angeles. And a quake packing more energy than 53 Hiroshima atomic bombs explodes. In less than 15 seconds, the entire city is overwhelmed by seismic shock waves. Massive tremors break from the epicenter. Millions of people thrown to the ground. The earth beneath Los Angeles shifts as much as nine feet. That's why it's so scary because Puente Hills essentially focuses the vast majority of its energy right over the entire LA basin. In fact, the real danger of Puente Hills isn't the quake itself. It's the ground that surrounds it. Most of Los Angeles is trapped in a giant basin. A useful analogy is that the LA basin is like a large bowl of sand and gravel. 
and the waves propagate in there and get trapped and they really can't get out. It's like shaking a bowl of jello. The waves from a large San Andreas will be more like large swells. Whereas the shaking from a Puente Hills earthquake in the LA basin will be much more of a rapid vibration, more like choppy waters. Puente Hills will be a lot more rapid shaking that won't last as long, but is ultimately much more damaging to, say, your home. And the first homes hit by the Puente Hills quake will be just like these. Single family structures perched directly above the fault line. It's a predicament some earthquake survivors know all too well. Actor Robert David Hall was at home in Northridge when that quake began. The, the house shook like I was in a blender. It, it felt like uh, a train, not just one train, two trains were coming through my house. I had a grand piano and it went flying about 40 feet into the fireplace, like a little child's toy. It was shot from a cannon into the fireplace. Puente Hills stirs up Los Angeles like water in a bathtub. Deadly pulses reverberate throughout the basin, and downtown is caught in the crosshairs. Will these skyscrapers topple? Can 18 major freeways carrying 3 million cars every day survive? We've seen that LA's office towers may ride out the South San Andreas quake. But Puente Hills is far more dangerous. Less than seven seconds after the quake begins, the tremors envelop hundreds of aging office towers, a potential disaster just waiting to happen. These steel frame structures are designed to survive an earthquake. Simulations show how the steel is supposed to flex, absorbing the vibrations, saving the structure from collapse. But the powerful Puente Hills quake may pick up and move a building as much as nine feet. What will happen to these structures and the people inside? Earth science data and supercomputers can now reveal what happens to a steel frame office building caught in a massive quake. As the earthquake begins, the high rise starts to sway. The earth beneath the building moves almost four feet and the tower's moderate sway becomes a dangerous swing. The structure now bends over eight feet off center. The office that survived the South San Andreas quake swayed less than 1%, well within the 2.5% limit. But this building now sways over 3% off center. The structure crosses the point of no return. The middle floors rip apart and the building collapses. Thousands of aging 10 to 20 story buildings are in grave danger. These shorter buildings rely on steel columns and beams to form a support skeleton. The I-beams join together by welds and bolts. Over 300 vital connections tying everything together. Whether the building stays together or it falls apart, is dependent on one and one thing only, how good the connection is between the beam and the column. This video shows how a tremor can tear apart a building. As the stresses increase, the steel fractures, the joints can't bear the load, and the connection breaks apart. The Puente Hills earthquake may snap thousands of these connections. There is a risk of collapse under the Puente Hills earthquake in downtown LA. The entire design philosophy for this connection was that it is meant to bend before it breaks. And what we discovered was that in many cases it will break. 
before it vanished. Kobe, Japan, 1995. A massive quake brings down thousands of steel frame buildings. Kobe showed us just how uh, destructive uh, a large earthquake can be. The death toll, 6,000 people. Over 43,000 injured. 300,000 left homeless. Over 400,000 buildings damaged or destroyed. Are we looking at the future of Los Angeles? Experts say Puente Hills could be more devastating than Kobe. But no one has measured the scale of the disaster until now. We've seen what massive quakes can do to an office building. But there are other buildings that seem even more vulnerable. The skyscrapers, home to tens of thousands of office workers. It's time to learn what the power of Puente Hills can do to the city's mightiest buildings. The recently discovered Puente Hills fault may be the source for the real big one. The earthquake that will destroy Los Angeles. And now scientists and supercomputers are bringing this devastating earthquake to life. We know the Puente Hills quake will begin directly beneath the city. And within seconds, downtown is under siege. Skyscrapers groan with every tremor, and a deadly cascade of events begins. First, walls, doorways, and window frames split apart. Then ceiling tiles fall. As the shaking increases, glass shatters, raining down on the streets below. Stone facades break free, plummeting to earth. Elevators fail, exit routes are blocked, and the structure itself starts to crumble. We've already seen a building collapse under the strains of a violent quake. But the question is whether a skyscraper over twice as high has any hope of survival. Engineer Nabi Youssef is about to find out. He's creating an unprecedented experiment, applying the Puente Hills supercomputer data to this 52-story building. Being inside a skyscraper during a major earthquake is a terrifying experience. 1989, San Francisco. A violent quake batters the city. Office worker Candace Thomas is trapped in a skyscraper. It's pretty frightening because you feel like you have no equilibrium and no uh, up or down. A co-worker is thrown toward the window. Candace yanks her back from the edge. And I, I just grabbed her before she got to the window. I was afraid it was going to pop out. You can't control a lot of how you're moving. The floor is, is kind of liquefying or moving underneath you. That sensation, a liquefying floor, will happen again in a massive earthquake. And applying Puente Hills to this building delivers a stunning blow. Within seconds, the earthquake takes hold and shakes the tower in every direction. At the 10 second mark, the earth itself bobs up and down over four feet. Seismic waves slide the building almost five feet from its original position. Powerful vibrations race up the tower. When these waves reach the top of the building, the swing increases up to seven feet off center. The structure twists and deforms, raining down an apocalyptic hailstorm. The glass falls a, a long way, and when it hits the street, it's almost like a hand grenade going off when it explodes. It's extremely violent. The building sways like a 650-foot-tall hula dancer.
What we're really worried about is that as you move the base of the building, the building would move over at the top and you, as it was getting its maximum velocity to the right, you'd snap it back to the left and shear off the columns. That would be a very serious situation. In less than a minute, the test ends and the skyscraper still stands. The worst shaking lasts only 40 seconds. But the devastation is almost biblical. Parts of Los Angeles have lost 50 to 100% of its buildings. Neighboring cities are also hit hard. Pasadena, Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, and Long Beach. And if the interstates collapse, there's almost no way for the victims, refugees, and rescuers to get in or out of the city. The 1994 Northridge quake destroyed several superhighways. But this pales in comparison to the onslaught of Puente Hills. 18 major interstates lie within the danger zone. The 1989 Northern California quake levels one mile of elevated highway in less than 10 seconds. And Los Angeles has miles of elevated highway. Many of these overpasses have been strengthened in recent years. But some experts say these reinforcements only shift the danger zone. All we're doing is we're chasing now the earthquake forces from one weak link to the next through the entire structure. At one minute, 10 seconds, the Puente Hills quake finally subsides. But its aftermath is just as frightening. Within days or even hours, first aid, food, and fresh water become scarce. To fully appreciate the scale of the disaster, imagine a quake even bigger than the one in Kobe, Japan, striking the city of Angels. Or a disaster like Hurricane Katrina. Could we survive a Katrina here? Could we evacuate the whole city? What if 300,000 people had to leave Los Angeles? What if 200,000 people were homeless in Los Angeles? Could we handle it? And what I found from all the emergency preparedness officials that I talked to was they hadn't really thought about the gigantic catastrophe, the big, big, big catastrophe. The U.S. Geological Survey report on the possible effects of a Puente Hills earthquake is truly horrifying. In the worst case scenario, almost 60,000 damaged buildings over 13,000 totally destroyed, over 700,000 homeless, and 18,000 dead. The price tag, $250 billion. Puente Hills is the big one LA has long feared. No one can predict when it will come, and nothing can stop it. But scientists are already racing to improve the city's defenses, searching for ways to build stronger homes, design quake-proof buildings, and even create ingenious mechanisms to bolster existing buildings. But surprisingly, the safest place you can be during a quake may be your own home. One of the strongest structures in an earthquake is also one of the smallest a single-frame wood frame home. The secret is buried in the walls, a construction technique builders call shear wall. Because wood is light, strong, and flexible, it's one of the best materials for quake-proof construction. When rigid walls are nailed into the wood, the house gains strength and retains flexibility to withstand the shake. In this video, a wood frame home is subjected to the power of an earthquake. The furnishings take a beating, but the structure itself survives. If you can picture a wall between my two arms, 
and an earthquake shaking the ground in this direction, it takes force and energy to distort this wall out of square. And it's that energy and that force and that resists the, the earthquake. So that's, that's what we would call a shear wall building. Wood frame homes aren't perfect. The Northridge quake damaged over $1 billion worth of structures like these. But most didn't flatten. And because the quake struck at four in the morning, when people were sleeping, thousands of lives were saved. But what if Puente Hills strikes at midday, when millions of people are in their offices? Supercomputers have shown what can happen when a monster quake attacks a building. Engineers need to design buildings that can survive the big one. And this outdoor laboratory may hold the key. Beneath this seven-story structure is the world's largest outdoor shake table a $9 million engineering marvel that can support over 2,000 tons and shake a building to the point of collapse. Today, it's going to test a structure that would be illegal under California's current building codes. It uses fewer steel rods called rebar to reinforce the concrete. Rebar is supposed to make buildings stronger, but it can also make them less flexible Getting the design right is a delicate science. And only an earthquake can reveal if this building will flex and sway or crash to the ground. The scientists programmed the shake table for a massive earthquake. 600 sensors called strain gauges will gather the data. Countdown. And this 270 ton guinea pig is getting ready to rock. This seven-story building shudders as a man-made earthquake begins. Will the structure survive? The building sways precariously, but keeps snapping back to center. The strongest vibrations strike a building at ground level and cracking appears at the base. At the five second mark of the experiment, the fate of the building hangs in the balance. But the structure stays upright. After 60 seconds, the man-made earthquake ceases. Engineers inspect the damage. The cracking at the base is actually minor, and the building is structurally sound. This new construction model of more concrete and less rebar provides enough flexibility and strength to weather the storm. The test results are clear. If this had been a real earthquake, the building survives, and the people walk away. We know we have the technology to design better buildings, buildings that will suffer less damage and be less likely to cause loss of life. This experiment is one small step in protecting earthquake zones around the world. But cities like Tokyo, Istanbul and Los Angeles can't be torn down and rebuilt. Engineers also need to invent ways to strengthen existing buildings. And the ultimate quake-proofing technology is hiding beneath the oldest skyscraper in Los Angeles, City Hall. This 80-year-old Grand Dame is over 30 floors high, covers an entire city block, and is irreplaceable. Built in 1926, this aging tower could be the first to crumble. But engineer Nabi Youssef claims City Hall will be up and running, even after the big one. And now he can prove it. 
Nabi unleashes the Puente Hills quake directly underneath City Hall. Can this historic landmark survive the big one? We know the Puente Hills quake overwhelms downtown within seconds. Buildings collapse, office windows blow out, terrified people scatter. But what about City Hall? The vibrations attack the structure, but City Hall seems to float off the ground. How is this possible? The secret is in the building's extreme makeover. After the Northridge quake, engineers actually lifted City Hall, all 125,000 tons of it off the ground. They dug out 47,000 tons of earth beneath the foundation and installed an ingenious earthquake survival system. A series of columns suspending City Hall in midair. A high-tech design called base isolation. When Puente Hill's first pulse strikes City Hall, giant pistons absorb the energy. Each of these massive shock absorbers can handle up to 300,000 pounds of force, greatly reducing vibrations and triggering the next line of defense. 416 giant columns called isolators. Each isolator is made of rubber and steel plates stacked together, supporting up to 4 million pounds of load. When Puente Hill strikes, these isolators absorb the brunt of the energy, saving the building from collapse. The isolation basically decouples and insulates the building from the ground shaking. More shock absorbers on the upper floors reduce catastrophic sway during the quake. And a waterless moat surrounds the building, letting City Hall slide back and forth without a scratch. Nabi's test proves the effectiveness of base isolation. But if this technology is so successful, why isn't it used throughout the city? The simple answer, money. Protecting City Hall with base isolation cost over $270 million. The only way a building gets that kind of treatment is if it shelters vital or irreplaceable materials, like City Hall. Beneath Los Angeles, dangerous fractures may be getting ready to rumble. The legendary San Andreas earthquake is already overdue. And now, there's a real big one, Puente Hills, churning just below the city. Computer simulations are bringing scientists, engineers, and now us, closer to the big one than ever before. But even supercomputers can't say when Los Angeles will start to shake. Time may actually be on LA's side. Experts say the devastating Puente Hills quake occurs every 3,000 years. Great news except no one knows where we are in the cycle. Closer to the beginning or the end. Southern California does have a date with destiny. The big one is lurking underground and a catastrophe is looming. But every day the earth stays quiet. Scientists and engineers find new ways to fortify our homes, offices, and skyscrapers. And given enough time, they'll keep Southern California standing tall on shaky ground.